This restaurant is very near and dear to our heart. And the hearts of a lot of Wichitans, too. So what makes it so special? It's my grandmother's secret. <laughs> That's part of it, but there's so much more to this story. Deli is the granddaughter of the woman whose recipes are used in this restaurant to this very day. My mother has a recipe written on, like, get a, like a piece of paper that's just a scrap piece of paper. I mean, it's not even typed. It's horrible. We should type it. Um, and it's locked away in a safe box. Connie's opened its doors in 1963. And my grandfather was in the military, so he was at McConnell and was a barber, and my grandmother was still a maid. Delia's grandfather thought his wife's cooking was so good, she should share it with everyone. So he gave her this restaurant as a gift. They basically ran the restaurant with my mother. Delia's mother, Carmen, was 14 when the restaurant started. She's running it with her daughters now. My parents sacrificed everything it took. They're immigrants. So my parents came over here with a big dream, like every immigrant comes with. So I felt like I couldn't let that down. The restaurant brings in a huge crowd almost every day, but that wasn't always the case. Things were pretty tough in the beginning. used to think, oh my God, this restaurant's going to go down. There were so many times when I thought, it's not going to happen. It's, we're going to shut the doors. Uh, they started the restaurant and they actually had a bar too. So that part was the profitable part in the beginning. It brought people in and then we ha were open long hours. It's an everyday thing and at times it was a struggle. <laughs> Carmen even met her husband at the restaurant and they raised five children here. All what we knew was our livelihood because this restaurant has basically been home for all of us daughters. You know, growing up, we would go to school and after school, my mother would pick us up, we'd come here and we would um, do our homework. My grandparents didn't know like the education themselves, but they always were pounding it into all of us. We had to do our homework when we got to the restaurant. And then we'd get in trouble, a lot of trouble if we didn't. Like, literally, bad trouble. After their homework was finished, they'd work in the restaurant. And then the cooks also brought their kids because they couldn't afford daycare. And that's basically how my sisters and I learned Spanish, because most of those children didn't know English. We didn't know that much Spanish. And that's how we learned. When times got tough, Connie's actually became the family's full-time home for about a year. When Delia's mother got divorced, they had nowhere else to go. And we had a king-size bed and everything in boxes and a couch. So this, the king-size bed was right here and the couch, and then everything back here was all of our boxes and our belongings. I think it's safe to say at one point all five of us, uh, having lived in the north end of Wichita, um, where there was a lot of this uh, gang activity or bad influences, it was easy to get into that. And I think all five of us at some point did for, whether it be a few days or a few months, or my little sister a few years. I've never been uh, arrested. I have been, I was at places where a lot of people were arrested when they would come, uh, but I hung around a lot of gang members and uh, people who, you know, sold drugs and did drugs, um, and people who beat up people and broke into people's cars. It got so bad that she came close to dying one night. Delia was dating a gang member from the opposite side of town who got into a fight. They, they were shooting at us as we were driving away and I just bent over and I'm like, oh my goodness, what was I doing there? That night, Delia decided to change course. Now this former gang member goes into schools to talk to kids about her experiences and to encourage them to stay out of gangs. Like, you know, how did you get out of it? And I was like, you know, I just like walked away. I literally did. But I think at the same time, some of these, the girls in the gang that I hang around were like, okay with that. They're like, well, Delia, she's actually not that bad. Like, let her go so she can do something good for the community. Because they, they sort of still knew the, our family, the restaurant, and what we did. So. Again, the restaurant played a pivotal role in her life. So I was scared. I was like, I hope nothing happens to my family or the restaurant or myself. But I was more concerned about the rest of my family. But she also attributes her success to something even more powerful. Their faith, and my faith, <laughs> and mother's prayers, uh, and just to just have always felt that um, they are capable of doing anything, and there shouldn't be any barriers to hinder that. I never lost hope. And I just knew that one day everything would, would be better. I just think back to so many things that could have happened. And thankfully God and 
and family and extended family and friends like helped us get through all that. Uh, you gotta be so proud. Oh, every night I thank God and in the morning I wake up and I pray and I say, thank you God. <laughs> I'm always thanking God for the, the blessings of my five daughters. Delia isn't the only one who got out of that lifestyle. Each of the five Garcia sisters have since gone on to become successful in their own right. Delia went on to get her master's degree and became a state representative at 27 years old. Her sister Sonia is one of only a handful of minority female FBI agents. Her oldest sister Monique is a public affairs and government relations manager at ICM. Big chimichanga, but said they're not fried. <laughs> you can find her two younger sisters still working at the restaurant alongside their mother while pursuing their goals too. Oh, it looks wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the community has grown with us as well. I, I really like their food and uh, especially their burrito. My favorite is the king size burrito. As we told you earlier in the story, Connie's is more than just a place to eat. It's a place where you form a lifelong bond. It's worth it. And, and we've come here enough where sometimes we get special service. <laughs> Uh, we are totally blessed with our extended family, our customers, who have been coming here literally before I was born and have watched all five of us grow up. And, and that's special because they'll come in here and, and they'll, you know, give us little birthday gifts or we'll give them gifts for their children. There have been quite a few customers that have come through the doors that have a story, too. Actor Harrison Ford is one of them. If you want proof of that, his picture is hanging right here above the cash register. Peek around the corner and before I could even see him, I heard his voice, I go, oh, and I wanted to faint. Oh my God, Indiana Jones with my restaurant. <laughs> it's just so incredible that he would pick our restaurant. Looking back, if you could change something, what would you change? Yeah, I get asked that question a lot, and I look back and I, and I don't think I would change anything. Um, all those bad things that I went through just only made me stronger. But I think they all learned that, you know, you're going to overcome that struggle and you're going to come out on top. And I think they're, they're much richer because of it. They really have uh, utilized everything. Every setback has been something that's been another stepping stone to get to the top of the mountain for them. May I have an order of rice, please? An order of rice. Order of rice. Can you get it? Okay. Order of rice? Okay. Good. Connie passed away in 2006, yet her presence is still felt by all those who knew her. There's, there's a corner booth that everyone knows that has been coming here for years, and that's Connie's booth. It's this left-hand corner booth, and she would just sit there and watch everybody. And it,